Hey there, this is Tulsa Criminal Defense Attorney Stephen Kale. I'm going to talk to you about um, a tough subject today. It's the best defenses for uh, sex crime charges. It's an unsavory subject, but the truth of the matter is that uh, people get charged with this all the time. They don't have an adequate defense. Uh, many people are truly not guilty of this offense. So I want to tell you about some of the best uh, defenses for sex crime related cases. Uh, one of the things we can talk about is ulterior motives. In other words, the accuser has some kind of ulterior motive and that can consist of many things. Uh, one of the things that could consist of is covering up an affair. Maybe someone uh, makes an allegations of sexual misconduct because they're trying to cover up an affair. Um, they've been caught cheating, and so they, they point the blame at somebody else just to cover themselves. Another one is domestic and custody dispute cases. Um, someone may make up trumped-up allegations just to gain an advantage in a, a custody case or some kind of domestic case. And then another one is for um, extortion, extortion of money. Uh, somebody may make um, accusations concerning a sex crime just to extort money uh, or to bring about a civil suit and gain an advantage uh, for money at that way. And then sometimes you just have um, angry teenagers that they've been hurt by a parent, they have some bitterness or resentment, um, they feel left out, um, or maybe there's a... a a child that doesn't like a step parent. I mean, really doesn't like a step parent. Um, maybe this child or teenager even has some mental um, health issues, but they'll make false allegations against a parent or step parent. That's not unusual to happen. Um, you know, sometimes uh, teens feel like there's too much parental control. These things happen, believe it or not. Not, not just making this stuff up. Um, sometimes people will make false allegations of a sex crime because they want revenge. Maybe, you know, a, a person in a relationship has, uh, well, the relationship's ended or they've felt extremely hurt and so they're gonna make some kind of false ac accusation against the other person. So that's just uh, one thing. Uh, ulterior motives is one thing that you can look at. Another thing is uh, what's called a Romeo and Juliet offense and, or defense and that deals mainly with um, Couples that are not even a couple, but somebody involved in a relationship that's they're close in age. Uh, Romeo and Juliet laws are sometimes called close in age exemptions. Um, those deal with very young people uh, between the ages of 14 and 19. You can read more about that on my website in the helpful info section where I talk about in more detail the Romeo and Juliet defense. Um, another uh, defense is consent. Typically, uh, sex crimes don't occur um, unless there hasn't been consent. So consent can be one form of a defense to your um, charge. And it depends on what you know the accusations are against you. But um, one of the ways to demonstrate uh, consent is by uh, looking at text messages, emails, other types of communications between at the parties just to demonstrate um, if they are sexual in nature that whatever occurred was consensual it wasn't by force or fear or, or some other thing um, another thing is to now let me back up just a second in order for there to be consent it has to be voluntary and a person has to have the mental capacity to consent so that's another thing to um, explore when examining the defense of consent um, Another thing is that sometimes uh, a defendant will make a false confession. Now, this happens all the time. In fact, I wrote an article on that, and take a look at that. Um, and again, in the helpful info section of my website at kalelawoffice.com. That's C-A-L-E lawoffice.com. Really, really interesting article. I think you know a lot of you would be interested in it. Um, Many people just assume that if uh, somebody is talking to a detective or police officer and confesses, then they, one, either really did it, or somehow they're under some kind of mental deficiency, or they've been subject to some kind of physical uh, duress. But people 
It blows my mind. People will make false confessions all the time, and there's a lot of reasons for that. Um, and again, take a look at that uh, video and article on my website at calloffs.com. Um, another defense is in regard to what's called tainted questioning. You find this a lot of times with uh, children or very young people. Typically what happens is a child will go through what's called a forensic interview. And that's just an interview to um, understand the allegations. And if you don't have a qualified forensic interviewer, or maybe there's a detective that's not qualified as a forensic interviewer, um, you can have what's called tainted questionings. In other words, the questions that the interviewer asks of this child can be leading um, can suggest a answer. Um, sometimes the child just wants to please the adult that is asking all these questions. Um, so that's one thing that can be looked at is a, whether or not the uh, questioning was tainted. And a, a good examination of this uh, might be able to get that whole interview thrown out. Might be, uh, you might be able to get some of the uh, testimony or evidence thrown out. And if that evidence is thrown out, then a lot of times the prosecutor case is just blown out of the water. Um, and it'll eventually, the case will eventually get dismissed. And if it has to go, if it has to, go to trial, then you can cross-examine the, um, the interviewer, the uh, forensic interview over this, create reasonable doubt. It can be a, a big blast to the uh, prosecution's case and possibly result in a, a dismissal or acquittal in that case. Um, some other defenses are what's called an alibi of, uh, defense. Alibi is where um, the, the accused person could not have committed the offense because he was completely somewhere else when this event happened, the event that caused the um, allegations. Um, another uh, possible defense to look at is involuntary intoxication. Now, this is where somebody has been involuntary not voluntary but involuntary intoxicated and so what you have to show is that at the time of the intoxication that person was um, incapable of understanding that his actions were wrong or um, that person didn't know wrong from right now that again that intoxication has to be involuntary so uh, and the acts must have in, in occurred during the uh, period of intoxication. So those are just some of the things. Now, sex crimes carry very heavy penalties and they can be um, difficult to battle in court. But that's why you need an aggressive criminal defense attorney. I like fighting hard for my clients. Um, I like fighting against the prosecution. These types of charges, are, again, are difficult, but they can be beaten. But you can't beat them unless you uh, call an attorney. In fact, you need to call me. I'm Tulsa Criminal Defense Attorney Stephen Kale. Give me a call at 918-277-4800. Again, that's 918-277-4800. Your initial consultation is free. I would love to hear from you, so give me a call.